Hey guys, so I thought I would do a video because I get a lot of questions on uh, my plaiting photos and videos of how do I get my plaits to look like they do. So there's a few different things that we can do when we plait that make a difference to how our rosette looks. So I thought I would just show you the difference, um, different things that people do when they're plaiting and they're not right or wrong, they're just different. And then how that impacts the way your rosette looks and so then be able to show you how I plait the way I plait to get the look that I get. So the first one here is how I plait. So this one is a little bit wider just because that way he gets to get the same amount of hair in each plait, um, just because it's the thinner part of the top of his crest. But I will do another one down here to show you um, that it's not actually about the width that I've done it in. So the first part I've done here, so the first couple of sections of his plait or the plait movements are um, a little bit looser and then it makes nice and tight on the way down. I've also used a little bit of product, but use a bit of hair wax at the top here and I, I dampen the mane. I use a little bit of hair wax at the top and I use a bit of gel spray on it which controls all the hair a bit. This one here, um, same idea except all I've done differently is that I have done it super super tight right at the very top. So you can see with this one here, I'll see if I can angle down, you can sort of see the movement that you get in the hair but you don't get that movement with this one because it's tighter. This one here I've then done as a looser plait. So you can see sort of when you push, it's actually much easier to sort of push the hair together and change the shape of it while the tighter ones, you sort of can't do it as much. And then this one down here I've done with no product at all. And then I will do another plait for you here. So I just thought I'd show you, so the differences now will, and I'll sew them all in the same so you can see the different end results that you get. So this is how I sew all my plaits. I'm actually just using dark brown thread uh, or the dark chestnut thread today because that's what I had on my needle but that's and what's in my apron today but the colour itself doesn't really matter too much it's a little bit tricky because I've got a camera in the way of my vision so I can't actually see as well as possible what I'm normally doing so I secure it through the base like that plait goes through the base of his neck now that plait is probably a little bit longer than I normally would do um, but my daughter here hi Claire <laughs> hates me chopping his mane. So right now, particularly when we're not able to ride, I'm not shortening his mane. So it's a little bit longer. Normally I'd probably do them about sort of that long, but the end result will still give you the same idea to see the differences. So folds in half, folds in half again, and I pinch it between my thumb and my finger. And So back and forth and I'll just do it a couple of times because we don't need these to stay in for too long today it's just to show you the difference quickly and then I'm going to be pulling them out so I don't want to take forever so sew them in a couple of times up and down so that's the first one done second one same again stitch it round stitch the end like that fold it in half now you can see with this one I've actually can get it sort of up sitting on top of the crest a bit more this one here I'm not going to be able to do that so it's going to have to fold down on the neck because it's just too tight to be able to get it up sitting up any higher Oops, so just a quick couple of back and forths there for you secure that stitch in you can grab the scissors trim the thread off so this is now the looser plait so same end oops I'll do it underneath there because it won't secure in so end Same thing, back and forth just a couple of times quickly just to secure that in for you. And last one, hopefully the lighting's all right that you guys can see what I'm doing. So this is the one that's done with no product. 
Oops, pull it too far through. Might just give me a second, I'll clip the rest of that hair out of the way for you so you can see what I'm doing. Lollipop stand still. Oh boy. I admit that is one of the things I love about my thread is that even if it comes off, I can pretty much re-thread it one-handed because it's flat and it's waxed and then I use nice big needles. So we'll just go through quickly like that. Oops, wrong. It's quite so I'm cut them. So there we go and so now I'll just show you the difference and I'll show you I'll do that one so I stand down here a little bit so you can see so you can see how this one here sits up a little bit more you get the softer sort of effect so you get the softer effect here so that's how you get that soft look this one here because it was so tight you can't get I can't sort of get any lift so it sits lower on the crest so guys this is actually a bit of a tip where if you've got a pony that's a bit cresty in the middle and what you're trying to do is not highlight where they're a little bit crusty. What you can do is sit some of your plaits up like this, where on the top of the top line where they um, aren't crusty. And when they get to where they are crusty, do them a little bit tighter and sit them lower down. So then it sort of changes. And if, and if you do that sort of gradually over a couple of plaits and sit them down where they are crusty, and then when that comes back, bring it back up again, you can actually sort of change the shape of. Um, the illusion of the of the top line that you see so this one here see how the rosettes sort of pushed out and it's kind of looser and bigger and wider so this is the one that we did that was actually a bit um thinner or it was like a looser flat and then this one here so you can see sort of more of the hairs the flyaways and the hairs that are sticking out of the plait here versus this one that's a bit tidier this one here is the one that was done dry and that had no um no product and not wet or anything so i will now do one more for you let me just pop my little camera back secure for you we'll see how we go so this is just a section that i sectioned off before oh, can you guys see hopefully so i just use a bit of water to dampen down the hair and then a bit of gel spray on the hair and then particularly this time of year where if they're getting a little bit fluffy and you sort of have those fluffy hairs like that, a little bit of hair wax, this is just my sculpting stick, will just help to control those. And I only do it over that top bit of the hair. I don't bring it all the way down. Then grab your comb and brush the product through a little bit. So that sort of works it into the hair, smooths it down into the hair like this. Let me just section this off a bit better for you. So now, just like I did with that first one, I'm going to section into three. And so the first parts of the plait are a little bit looser, like that. See, I pulled them down a little bit longer, so it's taking up more hair, and then I make it tight, like this. So my plait's quite tight nice and firm so it can't push apart like was what happened with that third rosette by having it's really the dampening of the hair that i find that really helps control it for the actual plait it's using the product what that does is make that hair stay there in the right spot for longer so for the length of your competition for overnight if you're like me and you plait overnight anything like that so fold it over and it off. Oh, sorry. Dog just ran past. Scared the pony. Now, I'm not going to trim his mane today, but normally if the mane was too long, I would then trim that off. But I'm not going to do that today because my daughter would prefer that I didn't. So I'll just get a bit of thread because I was just about out. my needle 
as you can see the manicure is long gone guys pull it down so i don't bother there's no knots in that I don't bother to do any knots pick it up needle through as is perfect timing i think it's my husband home on the quad bike which you can hear in the background so hopefully he's not going to come banging and crashing around here too much while i'm trying to finish the video for you guys So same thing. So you can see now, see how we've actually got that movement in the hair because we haven't done it so tight. That's the trick. So needle through the middle. Fold it in half. There's the shed door opening, guys. Fold it in half again. And I'm same thing. I'm just going to do the four stitches backwards and forwards. So normally if I'm doing it for an actual competition, I'd do an extra couple of passes, but... For this, I'm just doing the roll quickly. Job done for you. So, and that is how I plait. So, let me just jump down so I can show you. So, you can see how that one sits a bit higher. So, you can see how this one here sits up a bit looser and a bit higher for you because that's a little bit, that was a bit looser. So, there we've got, so that one sits up a bit higher like that, just like that one. And then we got those ones and the ones that does sort of don't. So I hope that helps a bit, guys, and sort of explains um, the different things that people do with their plaiting and the impact that it has on your rosettes and how I get my plaits looking the way I do. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.